welcome to our Veterans Retraining Assistance Program, VRAP, webinar. We have a full house this evening, and for those who are not able to get in, we will record and make available tonight's session. There are two presenters tonight, myself, Ken Simon, and Lou Tatia. I'm an administrative consultant, and Lute is Operations Director at American College of Technology. Legally and ethically, I need to give a disclaimer at this point. We are not Veteran Administration representatives. However, we work for an educational institution whose student body is mostly comprised of veterans. We have been trained in Veteran Affairs, GI Bill Protocol, and now VRAP, and have certifying veterans representatives on staff. The purpose of this presentation is to create a one-stop resource for understanding and pursuing VRAP. However simple the qualifications seem, many questions have arisen since its inception. Our thought was to create a one-stop platform consolidating questions, answers, and resources concerning the program. We're going to cover what is VRAP, qualifications, application process, high-demand jobs, approved VRAP schools, a live question and answer session, we will also provide you with all resources necessary to pursue VRAP. At this point, I want to give a brief overview of the evolution of the GI Bill. Veteran benefits have been hard fought for since the American Revolution. In 1932, bonus soldiers marched on Washington, D.C. These veterans had been promised a bonus for serving in World War I and never received it. The thousands who protested in Washington were driven to rioting and contained by the military. One man was killed and many were hurt. This is one of the most shameful and embarrassing displays against veterans in American history. The American Legion lobbied for the original GI Bill, which was signed into law by FDR in 1944. Sixteen million servicemen were to return home after World War II. Many feared such an influx of unemployed men would create a recession or depression. In fact, the opposite occurred. The GI Bill put over eight million men into college and training. The end result was a highly skilled and innovative group of people who created the greatest era of prosperity in this country and the greatest economy in the world. For every dollar invested, seven dollars were returned. The original GI Bill is considered one of the most significant pieces of legislation ever passed by Congress. The well-deserved and hard-earned benefits have unfortunately been allowed to fluctuate and diminish with the political climate and economic conditions of any given time. It seems a national disgrace that veterans' needs have been subordinated to other political agendas and ultimately veterans have been treated as though they're second-class citizens. We now have the post-9-11 GI Bill and the Montgomery GI Bill, both efforts to match benefits with the escalating costs of transitioning back to civilian life. Most recently, we have VRAP, a part of the Wild to Hire Heroes Act of 2011. This legislation was enacted to help alleviate the disproportionate number of unemployed veterans, providing short-term training for quick re-entry back into the workforce. Veterans make up almost 1 million of the 12 million unemployed. Of the total unemployed veterans, two-thirds are between the ages of 35 and 60. VRAP provides training assistance with money in the amount of $1,473 per month for a maximum of 12 months, and there's job placement assistance from the Department of Labor. The program is available to 99,000 participants. The first 45,000 through October 1, 2012, and the remainder through March 31, 2014. Qualifications for VRAP seem straightforward. However, many questions have been asked about the program since it began. Because of time considerations, initially I will address the qualifications on the surface as they appear on the VRAP homepage. During the live question and answer segment, we will cover all items in detail. In fact, we are receiving numerous questions in our chat room right now, and we will respond to them. Please be patient, and you will get a response. The first qualification is age. No younger than 35 and no older than 60. There are no exceptions to this. Interestingly, among unemployed veterans, this age group comprises two-thirds of the total. The second qualification is that you must be unemployed at the time of the VRAP application. Again, very straightforward. The Department of Labor defines unemployed with three criteria. People who are jobless, looking for jobs, and who are available to work. All three items must be met to be considered unemployed. The day you apply for VRAP, you need an unemployed status. Doesn't matter the day before nor the day after. The third qualification, you must have a discharge other than dishonorable. If you were dishonorably discharged, you do not qualify. 
The fourth qualification is that you are not eligible for any other VA education benefit. You have exhausted these resources. None are available to you, be it post 9-11 GI Bill, Montgomery GI Bill, or any other VA educational assistance. Fifth qualification, you are not in receipt of VA compensation due to unemployability. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions right now, which is fine. I just want to point out to you, be patient. We will get to them. We will respond to them at the live Q&A session. Be patient. We will be there very shortly. So hang in there. The sixth qualification, you are not enrolled in either a federal or state job training program. Finally, participants must be enrolled in a VA-approved program of education offered by a community college or technical school. The program must lead to an associate's degree or certificate and train the veteran for a high-demand job. I want to point out to you that we have provided a resource section in PDF format. The document contains all necessary VRAP web links and appropriate phone numbers. Simply open the document and click the necessary link. They are clickable links. I'm now going to cover the application process for VRAP. Prior to applying, you need to have the account number and routing number of a bank account to have your monies deposited to. This is the only form of payment. If you notice the screenshot, both numbers are easy to locate. On the bottom left of a check, you will find the routing number, and on the bottom center, you will find the account number. Now go to the eBenefits slash VONAP webpage. The address is in Resources. VONAP stands for Veterans Online Application. There are two eBenefits addresses. Use the eBenefits slash VONAP address. Click on the link to open the page and you will be prompted as to what to do. After completing the application, Veterans Affairs will send your Certificate of Eligibility, COE, in about 30 days or less. Now select the school you wish to attend and verify that they are VRAP approved. Also verify that they have the appropriate programs which lead to one of the high demand occupations. Take your COE to your school of choice and meet with a certifying veterans representative. Typically, they can be found in financial aid. They will certify you and you will be enrolled and ready to attend class. Finally, you will have to verify your attendance with the VA. The last day of each month, you will have to log into WAVE, Web Automated Verification of Enrollment, and fill out the appropriate information. Open the resource section and click on the WAVE address. You will be prompted as to what to do if you fail to do this, you will not receive your money. VRAP will provide training for programs that lead to a high demand occupation as determined by the Department of Labor. The list of 211 occupations can be accessed by clicking the link in the resource section. Occupations are as varied as actor, construction, law enforcement, computer specialist, registered nurses. The list is long. I want to bring in and introduce Lutatia. Director of Operations at American College of Technology. He's going to give a brief overview of ACOT and assist with the questions and answers. Thanks, Ken. As Ken mentioned, my name is Lute Atia. I am the Director of Operations at American College of Technology. And one of the reasons we're putting this webinar on is, is we've seen a very large amount of questions. We get a lot of phone calls and chat requests with just some basic questions about the VRAP program. And uh, many times we're assisting veterans with generic answers that are, are, are hard to find on the internet. Uh, so we decided to compile all of those questions and all those resources and put them together in this presentation to help students identify where they're going to find that they'll be most successful at the VRAP program. To give you a little background on American College of Technology, we have been working with veterans since roughly 2005. Uh, we are a very military friendly school. We've been voted military friendly uh, for the last three years in a row by GIJobs.com and uh, a large, large majority of our population are uh, veterans in active duty. Uh, one of the things that makes VRAP a good program is that it focuses on short-term high demand careers and programs. ACOT's curriculum is built off industry standards and the needs of the economy. Therefore, many of our programs show up on the VA's approved list or uh, in demand or high demand programs of study. We tie all of our curriculum and our programs with skill sets. So when you're in these programs, you're not just learning uh, theory and the basics. You're getting hands-on application with live instructors, one-on-one -on -one deliberation going on in class. Uh, if you're working with software, for example, you're getting hands-on application and you are watching and seeing your instructor 
work on this software. And we believe that this is the only way to really get retrained in a short amount of time. Uh, correspondence oftentimes does not work in technical settings when you're trying to learn a specific skill. It is necessary in some areas and, and helpful in some areas, but not so much in the programs that we offer. American College Technology also uses a lot of technology when delivering our curriculum and content. Uh, all of our live lectures are recorded for convenience. They're delivered over the internet, live, to computers, to iPads, Kindles, Nexus 7, a variety of mobile devices including um, iPhones and uh, Android phones. Uh, we are the classroom on the go and uh, our academic calendar was designed for the working adult. Uh, so we are very, very familiar uh, with catering to adults, catering to veterans and the military family and the technology that we use. Our classes, essentially, and our content is available 24-7. Continue this on after hours and you can also get live one-on-one -on -one assistance with both your instructors, tutors, and general support staff. Uh, so we believe that not only is the VRAP program a good program, but more importantly, we believe that ACOT's general mission ties very closely with VRAP mission. Thanks, Lute. It's time for the first question. I need to point out to our audience that we're not the best audio technicians, so with Lute and I combined on this, the quality of the sound may not be the best, so you have our apologies. Do I need my DD-214 in order to apply for VRAP? You don't need it in the onset to start the application process. It's certainly helpful if you have it because it allows the school certifying official to get several answers on one sheet of paper. If you're thinking about going to school under the VRAP program, go ahead and request it today, even if you're not sure, because it can take two to three weeks to receive that from the Department of Defense. Uh, the second question was, how do I check my benefits? There is a website, uh, you, actually the same website you use to enroll, ebenefits.va.gov, and we'll post that after this. Third question is, when does the first check arrive? Uh, traditionally, uh, your payments, your first payment will arrive roughly 30 days after the start of class, and typically at the beginning of the next month, around the third, fourth, or fifth of the month. And we have another California question. How much money will I be paid through the program? You'll receive $1,473 per month for a maximum of 12 months and a gross amount of roughly $17,600. What's the processing time for the VRAP application? Processing time, generally for GI Bill funds, it's 24 to 30 days. Can I pursue a two-year degree under VRAP? Yes, you can, providing the program is associated with one of the high-demand occupations. Also, VRAP will fund only 12 months of the program. How do you verify if a school is military-friendly, number one? Number two, what is a military-friendly school? Well, there's no real good way to verify if a school is truly military-friendly. That, that term is tossed around a lot uh, for marketing. It's about asking the right questions, in my opinion. First question I would always ask, what population of veteran or active duty is your, is your student body, number one. Number two, what sort of policies do you have in place to support an active duty member or a veteran? And number three, can I speak to a former or current student to verify that, in fact, you are truly military friendly? It comes down to a school focusing on the activities needed to support a veteran student and really making that their core focus. Can you explain ACOT for three consecutive years was voted a military friendly school? Can you tell me how that happened and by who? Uh, the organization that does this is called GIJobs.com. They survey schools, they look at statistics, uh, they look at policies and procedure, and they really ask the right questions that students oftentimes don't know what those questions are. So uh, I think that the reason ACOT was voted is because of our constant commitment to uh, veterans active duty and their families and always getting feedback from the student to make our school better. Do I have to be enrolled in a school to apply for VRAP? No, uh, you can get the process started prior to enrolling in a school. However, before receiving benefits, you must be certified by the school you are going to enroll in. 
How am I notified when I am approved for VRAP? You're going to receive your COE, Certificate of Eligibility, letter from the VA. You will also receive a second letter from Veterans Affairs indicating your direct deposit has been confirmed. This gentleman is going after an associate's degree, which means two years. So the first 12 months, he'll receive benefits from VRAP. His specific question is, what do I do about the second 12 months or the second year? Is there any way to do this without money out of pocket? Yes, there are a few different options. Uh, option one is if you're, if you're at the right school and tuition dollars are uh, reasonable, you won't use your full uh, allowed benefit for the 12 months. Uh, in fact, for example, if you're receiving 1473 I believe, per month, uh, and tuition happens to be around 800 you have additional monies left over. You can apply that towards future classes with the school. Uh, the other option is for year two, uh, see if the school has any grant programs, federal aid, work studies, uh, any, any uh, veteran discounts, anything that might help uh, keeping money out of pocket for the year two. How does ACOT fit into this scenario? Well, you know, we, we try to promote um, very healthy budgets, and, and we don't want to see students going to debt. So what we've allowed students to do, uh, you know, because per class our, our, our charges are, are less than 900 per class, uh, obviously the, the veteran receives uh, over $1,400. So uh, many are opting to basically save funds to continue on with their second year. Others are asking about scholarships and grants and, and we're able to provide information on that. More importantly, uh, at our school a student can attend the whole year without any money out of pocket or up front and uh, if qualify for grants year two they can actually complete the whole second year with just under uh, grants and scholarships uh, if they're eligible without borrowing a single penny or paying any out of pocket. All right, I, you know, all of a sudden I got all these questions, and you threw out that uh, cost per class is eight hundred to nine hundred dollars. They're getting in pocket almost fifteen hundred dollars, fourteen hundred and seventy-three dollars. Can you clarify that uh, about ACOT again? There, there. I've got several questions all of a sudden. Well, you know, any school that's military friendly is going to have um, uh, reasonable tuition. I think the the Department of Veteran Affairs defines that as two hundred fifty dollars per credit hour or less. So ACOT fits under that model, and therefore, since you're allowed the fourteen hundred per month, uh, you know, a veteran is left with uh, a few hundred dollars left over each month, uh, roughly five hundred. So some discretionary income. Now, uh, to get to the brass tax and more specific about it, come on, how's this compared to other schools, other online schools, or traditional brick and mortar schools in terms of tuition? Well, you know, that's that's what they're getting to. That's what these questions are about. They want to know, uh, you know, cost wise. How do you compare with other online schools? You throw out this number and some of these questions, they they uh, it seems as though we're incredulous here. They're, they're questioning us. Well, you know, you want to look for a school that has a, a flat tuition rate, books, fees, everything. And when you have that situation uh, like you do with ACOT, it's very easy to budget. So. If a course is say eight hundred and seventy-two dollars, and you receive fourteen hundred, you will be asked to pay that eight seventy-two over say a six-week period, and basically the the rest is yours for, uh, you know, internet and different things like that. One of the great things about ACOT is all of your technology is included, all of your books are included, your tuition is capped, it won't change, everything is right there, including the technology needed to access class. And use the ebooks and things like that. Uh, we, you know, our school gives out a Kindle Fire uh, or some sort of e-reader tablet. Other schools, um, if you're not with a military-friendly school or a school that sort of focuses on that demographic, the tuition is going to be higher. It could be okay. three, four hundred dollars a credit hour. Okay, I apologize for interrupting, but this is critical also. When you're looking at a school, and especially in terms of tuition, a lot of schools, there is not a sense of transparency. The absolute cost. Some will advertise tuition, but will not put out front what the fees are. Is What ACOT charges, is that inclusive of everything? Yes, and that is extremely important for you to ask if you are looking at a school. That's why I asked it. <laughs> you want the total cost per class. You want transparency. Yes, that way you're not surprised with a technology fee or some sort of lab fee and you've, you've already 
and you, you didn't factor that into your budget. So now you're at the end of the year, you can't get your transcript, you're not able to get your credits, and it's all because it, there was not that transparency up front. So that is key to make sure you check on your schools and ask them, bottom line, what is my complete out-of-pocket fees, books, everything involved? Okay, we got another question. This was answered already in the webinar, but I'm going to cover it again. And specifically, they're asking, what is considered unemployed? And the DOL and uh, the Veteran Administration define, especially the DOL, defines it. There are three criteria to meet here. People who are jobless, looking for a job, and people who are available for work. You've got to meet all three at one time. Um, there is, Ken, looks like we got another one. How do they determine or how do they confirm that one is unemployed? Okay, you need to be un unemployed on the date of application. You need to be certain of that. And if you look on the DOL's website, this is a mouthful, multi syllabic word that I don't know if I can even uh, pronounce, self-attestation. Better get out the funk and wagnall. So it, I guess it seems like you tell them you're unemployed and they take your word for it. Exactly. That's what it boils down to. So, you know, you, you want to play it on the safe side, uh, but again, it's basically your word of honor. Uh, See so another message here. What if I, you know, do some painting on the side, uh, a cash deal, and what if I get a job after I start the VRAP program? So both, both good questions. Um, as far as the cash job, you know, that's you're, you're just going to take responsibility for that. I, I can't tell you if, if the Department of Labor or the VA will determine that as employed or not. Uh, I can tell you that if you do uh, receive uh, you know, a, a full-time job or a job after the fact, your eligibility is still good for the 12 months so long as you do not stop your training. Ken, do you have anything on that? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Again. Uh, the letter of the law, it, as we specified, there's three criteria for being unemployed. So you've got to use your own discretion, and it's up to your own word as to whether or not you're unemployed. You know, certainly we want to optimize all of our opportunities uh, that are presented to us, but use your discretion. Uh, again, meet those three criteria for being unemployed and move forward with it. All right, excellent. Let's, uh, let's see what else we have here on the chat. Okay, a question from California. How does the VA verify school attendance? You must verify your attendance on the last day of every month before your funds are dispersed. You have two options, online or by phone. Online, you'll utilize the WAVE system. It stands for Web Automated Verification of Enrollment. Or you can use the telephone and use the IVR system, Interactive Voice Response. That phone number is one 823 2378 Both the web address and the phone number is listed in the resource section. My school is asking for tuition and books be paid prior to entering class. How do I accommodate that? Uh, well, there's there's no real great way to accommodate that. Um, you know that honestly that what that's what makes the school military friendly or not. Uh, in most cases, with uh, different chapters of the GI Bill or uh, GI Bill funds, funds are never available beforehand. I would suggest you talk to somebody there, see if you can show them a certificate of eligibility or some sort of proof that you're uh, eligible for the funds and convince them otherwise uh, or find a school that's going to accommodate this for you uh, many schools do in fact american college of technology uh, we we don't take any payment up front uh, we just ask that you provide a certificate of eligibility and um, once you complete the orientation and you are enrolled in the class you are able to receive books software uh, anything apply anything applicable to class without paying up front Am I eligible for VRAP if I've transferred my post-9-11 benefits to my spouse? Probably you are eligible for VRAP if you transferred all unused post-9-11 GI benefits to a spouse or a dependent. To qualify for VRAP, you cannot be eligible for any educational program administered by the VA. You need to be certain to verify your status with the VA. A question from Arizona. Can I receive VRAP funds and unemployment benefits at the same time? 
Uh, in most cases, you can. You need to verify this with your local state employment uh, service. It used to be if you were a student, you could not receive unemployment benefits, but the rulings on that have changed in the recent past. Again, verify it with your local employment service. Here's a question from Minnesota. Can I work after I am approved for VRAP? Yes, you have to be unemployed only at the time of application for VRAP. Doesn't matter the day before or the day after. It is the day of. Are online schools approved for VRAP? Yes, they are. In order for a school to qualify, it must be a two-year technical school or a community college. Brick and mortar versus online education is not a qualifying factor for VRAP. What if I don't have a bank account for direct deposit? You have three options. Uh, the first obvious one, open up an account. Uh, secondly, you can sign up for what's called ETA, Electronic Transfer Account. Uh, ETA is provided for government deposits. It costs nothing. You can check the website listed in the resource section for local access. In a third option, you can utilize a friend's or a relative's bank account. Do VRAP funds go directly to the school? No, they don't. You receive them to your direct deposit account, and it's your obligation to distribute monies owed to the school. What is considered a full-time student? In a typical college situation, full-time is considered 12 credit hours per semester. However, in tech schools and other educational institutions, the system can be different. It's critical that you verify this with your veteran certifying representative. Here's another question from Pennsylvania. Do schools that deal with GI Bill, do they all have VA representatives on staff? Yes, Ken, they're, they're called school certifying officials. They're employees of the school that their primary job function is to assist the veteran, learn everything about the veteran's funding program, and ensure that they're billed correctly and that their funding is working correctly. Uh, at our school, there are three individuals, and that is their, their primary job function. Uh, we, annually, we go to training. In fact, we recently came back from training uh, from Saint, in St. Louis in July to learn about the new VRAP program. So. Uh, they are very trained and, and ready to help you at all times. Um, myself, I am one of those. I have been since 2005. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting decision or interesting position because there's constant changes and we're always learning more about the programs. And oftentimes, we are the first line in learning some of these programs. Another great thing about that position is we communicate with other school certifying officials. So we're able to find best practices. There's a couple of not-for-profit organizations that sort of facilitate the communication between those different schools and those officers. Uh, so needless to say, our, our staff, the three of us, are very well trained and we're here to help you at any time. How do I verify the status of my VRAP application? Uh, there's a couple different ways. Uh, one of the main websites is called eBenefits. It's uh, where you initially sign up for your benefits. Uh, and the resources actually for this webinar will have it and on our website it's there. But you can also call your school certifying official uh, what you should get in the mail after a few weeks of your application is a certificate of eligibility. And until you have that, you can log into eBenefits after a few days of applying, and it should update your benefit status. And you can do a screenshot and email that over to your um, certifying official. Is there an approved VRAP schools list? No, we've not found one. However, it's quite easy to determine if a school is approved. Just ask them. If you're searching for a school, use the College Navigator's website. The address is located in the resource section. I want to thank you for attending the webinar, and we hope you have found the VRAP information helpful. You can contact us at acot.edu and talk in the live chat or call 800-804-1388. Goodbye and good luck.